worst rapper alive. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Big Mac's back on the mic like oops. Back on the horse, still jumping through hoops. I'm missing Lincoln Pink, I don't lip sync. Just to be clear, choking isn't my kink, but I do it anyway sometimes, I guess. Gotta laugh now, die later in my times of stress. I'm blessed, feeling good, charged up like a Hadouken. Moldadi Tabanakusti! Welcome to a special short edition of the Worst Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, as always, Jack Lusne, and I'm bringing you a very special edition of the worst wrestling podcast because this was specially requested by a fan shout out to you nick opalevsky uh, i hope i'm saying your name correctly he found me on facebook and uh, requested that i do a review of wwe super tape volume two over on peacock uh so i did exactly that uh he asked that i do it uh as letter grades that's exactly what I did. I broke it down basically into segments, like the kind of the way it was segmented on the tape. And, uh, you know, immediately I was hit with huge, huge nostalgia vibes. Uh, the show was hosted by Sean Mooney. Uh, There's this great gag where every time he'd be like, super tape, super tape, be a loud, booming voice uh, in the background. So, uh, I, again, very much, uh, I think this tape was, uh, straight from 1990, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which was the year I was born. Uh, so a lot of these matches, um, I actually have not seen. Uh, so again, very nostalgic vibes, um, uh, you know, very like my earliest recollections of watching wrestling, uh, tapes and highlights with my dad. Uh, way, way, way back in the day. So we start off with the Macho Man Randy Seven. Oh yeah, and he's facing Hacksaw. Oh, Jim Duggan. Uh, and man, Hacksaw just looks like a fucking bear. Like, uh, you know, it was a great spot to open where you know Macho Man's really taking his time. Uh, doing the entrance and Hacksaw comes over and dumps him off the throne. Uh, you know, Macho Man just looks so graceful. Um, I really love heel Randy Savage. To me, that was like the best version of Randy Savage, uh, especially when he had sensational Queen Sherry, who was an amazing valet and manager. You know, that's kind of a lost art nowadays, but I will say shout out to Scarlett. Uh, and Karrion and Cross, who have kind of brought that back a little bit, a little bit of traditionalism in our current day product. Um, so yeah, Macho Man with the heel win here. But after the match, Hacksaw stands tall. You know, they kind of have a back and forth, and uh, Hacksaw kind of sends them scampering. So this was for me uh, an A minus to start off. This was a great, perfect way to start the tape. Uh, and I even did modern day comps. Uh, this one hilarious to me. Uh, almost reminded me a little bit of like a Seth Rollins versus a Braun Strowman. And kind of what I mean by that is like you had the very like uh, technical guy, uh, you know, with a lot of speed and just like a really great overall wrestler versus kind of the big powerhouse uh, that just kind of bulldozes his way through you. So I, I thought this was a really great match. Macho Man versus Hacksaw. And then we were on to a double dosing of the Rockers. And uh, this was very telling. This was weird watching, especially because I got to tell you, uh, I had just recently watched The Dark Side of the Ring and I watched the episode with Marty Jannetty specifically. And so when I was watching these back, and again, I grew up in a little bit later era of a wrestling period. I, it was much more in the WWF attitude era, not so much in these like golden years. These were kind of like, you know, tastes that I'd watch on occasion, like when, with my dad, cause he had, you know, he had them, but for the most part, like we were watching at that point, like the live product. Right. So, uh, this was my first time kind of really seeing, 
the Rockers in action. The Rockers versus Power of Pain in Madison Square Garden. Uh, Powers of Pain, of course, with Mr. Fuji, who I do remember as a valet. Uh, and it was funny because I was very much like, oh, this is the original super kick party. Because like at one point, uh, they hit uh, one of the dudes with a double super kick. And definitely I could see how, you know, the Rockers influenced a large segment of the later performers uh, in wrestling, especially I could see their influence on a team like the Young Bucks. Uh, so ironically enough to me, modern day comp, this was like literally if Young Bucks were going against authors of pain. Um, but yeah, you know, powers of pain go over. Uh, Mia, uh, Mr. Fuji, uh, you know, tripped, uh, tripped up Janetti and, uh, he took a big elbow and, you know, the rockers make a flurry after the match and get the pop and stand tall. Um, but man, again, Janetti took a lot of the brunt in this match. Like when you're talking about like, you know, the tag team matches, the way they're set up, usually you'll have one guy gets beat up a lot, obviously. And then he's got to make that hot tag. And I'll tell you, in both of the matches on this tape, it was Janetti who really got the shit kicked out of him to make the hot tag to Sean. So a little bit of foreshadowing of their of their future. Uh, but this match I had as a B plus, and then the Rockers versus Dino Bravo and Greg the Hammer Valentine with Jimmy Hart. You know, it was a good back and forth action. But this was the second match again where Janetti takes the main beatdown spot and Sean gets the hot tag, and then. It's like Janetti takes the loss, but then like this random referee comes down and reverses the decision for the Rockers. I was not a fan of this ending. This definitely felt like some Vince McMahon shenanigans. Um, you know, my modern day comp for this was like Young Bucks versus FDR, but like if they had blonde hair, like the Hollywood blondes, but it's FDR. Um, so, you know, because of the, the wonky finish, and also I will say, I think I was affected by the fact that they had both Rockers matches back to back on the tape. To me, I had this one as C plus. Like I, again, I, it's not like I'm like out here failing. It was still a good match. It was good enough to get on the super tape. Super tape. But at the same time, I really enjoyed uh, both of these matches. Again, just the I think the fact that they were back to back. The first one I had as a B plus. This one I had as a C plus. Hercules versus Akeem. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, Akeem. This guy fucking... I was not familiar with Akeem. I gotta tell you, even though he looks like fucking Danny DeVito in a blue suit uh, out here trying to film the Penguin, uh, <laughs> he was awesome. Like, uh, you know, he had the man, his manager, the Slickster. Uh, manager's very popular in this day and age. But, man, Akeem was hilarious. You know who he kind of reminded me of? Uh, Q from Impractical Jokers. They kind of have the same vibes. But man, I just found Akeem to be incredibly entertaining. Um, you know, uh, Hercules ends up winning by disqualification because the Slickster gets caught cheating. And then uh, Hercules gets to hit the slam post-match and stands tall with his chain whipping around. So I, I thought this was a great spot, personally. Uh, so for me, again, I had this one as a B plus. And then, uh, you know, and then we got into the, the random move teaching section, which this, to me, was, oh, like, as a, as a wrestling fan nowadays, where it's like, I feel like every single wrestling fan that's even remotely diehard knows the name of every single fucking move that's ever been invented. Uh, you know, you got guys out here doing fucking Suicida, Plancha, 360, Triple, Asante dives, and fans are calling it, like, nobody's business. You know, the, the, the part where they're fucking showing, like, forearm, reverse whip backdrop i was like damn imagine doing something like this nowadays like how fucking hilarious like this was some like this was truly like time period-esque shit right here uh so i was eating it up i was honestly laughing my ass off uh the part where they went jumping karate kick that part had me fucking dying um you know it was like orient express versus two jabronis and they're using the orient express to like show the moves you had Lord Alfred Haynes narrating. I'm a sucker for a British announcer. 
Uh, I love Nigel, uh, forgetting his name, but he's over in, I don't even know where he's at nowadays. But um, anyways, really, really fan of this segment in general. Even though it's outdated, I had it as a B. Just saying. Um, and then we had Axe and Smash Demolition uh, versus Orient Express. And again, shout out to Lord Alfred Haynes on the announcing. Uh, it ended up being a count out victory for the Orient Express. Uh, and again, to me, the modern day comp for this was Bianca and Jade. Uh, that this was, uh, or sorry, this was damage control. Versus Bianca and Jade, where it's like damage control wins by uh, by count on. And I think I actually forgot um, Hercules versus Akeem. I don't think I ended up really even finding like a modern day comp for that one, to be honest. Because Akeem was just like such a unique cat. And I loved that about him. Uh, but yeah, sorry. For Demolition versus Orient Express, I had this as a B-. minus. And then, this again was like the fuckeries with the finish. Like, I would have had this as potentially one of my highest rated matches on, on the whole tape. It was Bret Hart versus Rick Martel. Uh, Bret, just such a technical wizard. It's like, he's one where it's like when you watch his matches, they truly hold up in a sense of like, you almost feel like you're watching a modern day match, um, you know, pulled out of time. So, you know, huge credit to Bret. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Uh, absolutely loved the match, but the finish just, you know, uh, they did this thing where it was like a draw finish because like the time limit ran out. But it, at first they made it seem like it was going to be a count out. I was genuinely just like, what the fuck? I obviously it's like I know back then they had to always find a way almost to like keep the, the heat so that they could have these matches over and over on on the actual circuit because they were doing this in front of live crowds more so than, and, and they were, you know, making like the super tapes like less of like a true TV pro. I get all of that. Um, but at the same time, just hate those kind of wonky finishes. Even still with that, had this as an A minus. Uh, and then they had the manager spotlight. You had the slit stuff. He, he, it was kind of a random promo and kind of goofy. Definitely, again, pulled out of time a little bit, a little bit of a time warp, but I still had this as a B. At this point, I've just, like, I'm thoroughly entertained. And then we get into the the ending, um, the last three segments of, of the tape. Uh, Roddy Piper versus Ravishing Rick Rude with Bobby the Brain Heenan in a cage match. This was... Fantastic. This to me, I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat, I had this as an A plus. Uh, even though I had to see uh Rick Rude's ass for way too much of this match. Uh the actual match itself was fucking fantastic. Like you had uh the entrances were fantastic, the characters phenomenal. You know, you've got uh Roddy Ra Roddy Roddy Piper coming in, pulling the belt strap off, hitting him with the belt, biting uh Rick Rude, and he gets color early. Um, again, at one point, Rude's trying to escape the cage and, uh, Roddy like damn near pulls his fucking uh, pants right off. Uh, and then it's like for the rest of the match, it feels like Rick Rude can't get his pants up properly. Um, even at one point, like going to the top of the cage and, uh, you know, he, he hit him with a move. I called it the plumber's crack. Cause you could literally see half of Rick Rude's ass hanging out. Just a full moon going on in this match. but. Uh, again, lots of great spots. Um, Rude at one point goes up again to the cage, uh, to the top of the cage, uh, but Roddy shakes it. Rude like falls off and gets hung up. Uh, and again, that part was a great visual because it's like he's hanging over and the blood streaming from his face. And uh, and then you know Roddy um, on the way out, Heenan hits him in the head with the cage, and then they go again back and forth. And then at one point, Heenan sneaks the brass knuckles into Rude, but then Roddy hits him. He drops the knucks. Roddy gets those brass knuckles, and that's all she wrote. Uh, he 
escapes the cage after that. To me, modern day comp hilariously. So it'd be like if John Moxley and Johnny TV had a cage match nowadays. That's kind of what this felt like in terms of characters. And then we had the blooper segment with Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heen. And this was just, again, this was another A for me. Everything that they were doing was hysterical. Those two guys just had such unique uh, and amazing chemistry. Just genuinely, like, even again, it, it's kind of like when you watch, like, Airplane, like, Leslie Nielsen movies. Like, they're just, I know they're old, but they still hold up. They're so fucking funny. And then finally, Hulk Hogan. Durr, durr, durr. I always say, I always fuck it up. I always want to say eat your prayers and say your vitamins. No, eat your vitamins and say your prayers, brother. Because Hulk Hogan and Brutus Beefcake are coming down to take on Mr. Perfect and the genius Lanny Poffo. Uh, but yeah, this was the last match of the tape. It was a solid tag match. Look, uh, Hulk Hogan's never been my favorite. <laughs> uh, the the work for this match, honestly, uh, Lanny Poffo with his weird little uh dainty heel work was like the highlight um and i kurt hennig selling like a motherfucker but for the most part it's like hogan and Bruce, uh brutus beefcake somewhat limited in the range of motions of what they're gonna do but um it was just it was a great match the crowd's eating the shit out of it so it's hard to again hard to ignore uh the live audience i still had this as a b uh, you know, again, not necessarily my cup of tea, but it was great. I understand why Hogan's the last one on the tape because he was the, the big shit back then. Um, but to me, easily, easily, the best match on this tape was Roddy Piper versus Ravishing Rick Rude in the cage. Uh, I really loved the blooper segments. And even though, again, the finish wasn't great, I loved Bret Hart versus Rick Martel. And I also really loved uh, Macho Man and Hacksaw right at the beginning. That kind of got me juiced. So overall, my overall rating for this WWE Super Tape Volume 2, A. Just a solid A, my man. No minus, no plus, just a solid, a solid A. So shout out to you, my guy, Nick Opalewski. Thank you so much for writing into the show. Uh, thank you again for the follow, the subscribe, all of that. And hey, all of you guys out there, if you want uh, a segment, you want something on the show, all you got to do is write into me. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on TikTok. If you don't want to do any of that, you can even just send an email to worstsportschannel at gmail.com. So until then, I'll catch all of you guys on the flip side. My positive contact results in affirmative impact. Never vulgarize on raps. I'm never primitive, but animalistic, vicious, characteristic, hereditary, every potency, epithetic genes, yo. Ever the HMCs that are short and never speak. Some of the beers like, some of the razor blades and grease in your bare feet. I see your fucking colleagues misprize you very much to your dismay. So today, I can say you won't be running away. Hold your tail between your legs. I'm gonna advocate when you fail before stakes. I'll take a hacksaw to you, cockeyed, mumble rap, slack jaws. Leave you shredded on a side like some coleslaw. The double time with the clothesline from hell. Like Bradshaw, I'm toxic like septic shot. A dying breed like